I'm trying this one. I know. It's almost the same. Hey, stand go. back. There we go. Okay, when you're ready. Side to the side. You're kind of pointing, pointing pretty far. You're pretty high. high. Really? You're going high. Yeah. There you go. It's so hard for me to tell where this is going. Hold tight. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, this is way big. That's it. That was your six. See? Mm -mm. Nope. Hey everybody, it's Lee with One Ministries and this is my beautiful wife, Erin. Hi. I wanted to introduce her because I wanted to have her be the lead on this video. I don't know about the lead. You can do it. All right, so what do you want me to talk about? So we're talking all about personal protection and speci specifically ladies and personal protection. Uh, guys, you already have a billion videos out there, but I don't feel enough of the ladies get a chance to talk about the things that they go through. And I thought my wife's situation was perfect because some of the things that she's been having. So how did all this start, babe? Well, um, I'm a stay at home mom, so I'm a homeschooler. So I'm home with our kids full time. So I'm home and once in a while we'll get an unexpected visitor at the door. We've had people wander up our driveway. There've been several times I really have wished that there was some way that I could feel a little bit more comfortable. You know, my big boy will grab his BB gun, but um, when it comes down to it, I really wish there was, I personally was wishing that I felt more confident um, with a weapon that I would feel confident using a weapon in an emergency if I had to of course that would always be my last resort but if I had to I wanted to be able to so I decided to pursue my concealed carry and completed that course um, I believe it was Oregon tactical with Brian Mumford and his crew they did an amazing job really affordable half-day course 150 bucks um, definitely recommend that uh, for identifying not just uh, pitfalls and malfunctions, things that you need to look for when using a weapon, but also demonstrating weapon use and also the legal aspects of owning and carrying a weapon. So she was a little bit anxious. Um, she had already purchased this nine millimeter. This is the Smith & Wesson M&P &P, M &P Shield easy i think it's a nine shields what they call it but anyway um she purchased this and she liked the fact that it had different forms of safeties on it you have to depress this to be able to shoot it it's a little bit narrower gun um so but with that and some of the anxiety came with the fact that you specifically have an issue with your wrist you want to tell them about that right so I've had carpal tunnel in both of my hands. I had surgery on both of my hands and I'm recovered from that. But one of the result of it, like a long lasting result has been really reduced grip strength. So I've got just a real weakness in my hands. My wrists are really puny. And um, so that was one of my main concerns. I got this gun and I did not at all feel comfortable pulling it back. So, you know, I tried it a couple times at home and just felt like it was too heavy and too, you know, hard for me to pull back. And so I really just didn't do anything with it. Now, normally I'd be out practicing and shooting with my husband here from Idaho. He's a mountain man, but we had a little bit of an unorthodox situation. Yeah, so I have a, uh, I, I got a um, assault three charge. Um, a guy was trying to get into my place. We got in a fight. Anyway, long story short, um, I got a felony because of that and I couldn't own a weapon anymore, which I think is ridiculous. And I also feel um, if it, we can do anything to help change some things for the better, everybody should be able to defend themselves, even if you've been to prison. Now let's say special stipulations could be you used a gun in your crime or um, you know certain things like that where you're out of your mind because of drugs or something. 
maybe we can make some special exceptions, but I did my time, I should be back to normal. But that's not the way it works in this country. So I had to go and get my record expunged just so I could feel more comfortable carrying weapons and defending my family. Um, I'm not even that big of a, I'm not super pro about, you know, carrying a gun or anything in the sense that, but as you could probably see, things are changing. If the economy takes a dive, which it has in the past, we've seen, you know, stuff, prices of things skyrocket, stuff like that. When these things happen, people start to steal and people, people look for easy prey. So they look for somebody who can't defend themselves. So I'm gone at work almost all the, all the time at, you know, during the day, my wife is home with the kids and she's spoken up about multiple times, like she said, where people have come to the door and been on the property and it made her feel really uncomfortable. And I want her to feel comfortable. So now that I've had an expungement, I was able to participate in all of this and take her out and shooting for her first time. And before that, she had already got her concealed weapons, but we want to, uh, we wanted to find something that would make her feel more comfortable. So I suggested the Taurus TX-22 and a friend of hers, I think it was your mom, yeah, uh, suggested a 380. And when we went in, we went uh, together, she chose, um, I kind of I kind of led on this one too, I think. I think I was like, no, baby, you should get this one. Because she actually wanted the other one with the safety and oh, even over the fact that this has a laser, which is so cool that it comes with that. But uh, the sleekness of it and, you know, it, it looks really nice and the profile is great. Like you could really feel like you could conceal carry this no problem. It's, it's very nice. So it just has this nice little sleeve, really comfortable. It's all the way up over the trigger, which is nice since which it doesn't have that safety. You should have when in any holster, you should have it cover the trigger. Yeah. But anyway, so we went shopping for these two guns and then um, I suggested the Taurus TX-22 but I also kind of pushed for this one as well, although another friend suggested it. But well, these... I also wanted something smaller than this because I thought if I'm going to conceal carry, I'm normally in athleisure type clothes. I'm not wearing jeans and a belt every day. So for me, this kind of a weapon didn't seem like something I would probably carry if I was out hiking with my boys or having it in my pocket. It just seemed like something I probably wasn't likely to do, something more sleek and small where I could conceal it. I thought would be something I probably would be comfortable with. This is not a concealed carry, but this would be able to, but this could be a defensive weapon at home. And I feel like a 22 is a defensive weapon. I'm from Idaho, like she may have stated already. And because I grew up really poor, we would shoot less expensive weapons, 22s. So I know that these are deadly. I know that this can stop a deer. So I know that people, uh, when they're defending themselves, if they feel more comfortable about the firearm, they're more likely to use it and use it the right way. So for that, that's why I suggested it. But what did you think about, now that you've shot all these guns, with your specific situation, how did you feel about the guns and how did they make you, like, what was the, what was your takeaway from it all? Well, I was really pleasantly surprised by the m and uh, Going in, like I said, I was really worried I wouldn't even be able to pull it back. Um, but after practicing with it and shooting it a few times, I feel very comfortable pulling it back. I don't feel like it's too difficult. It is a heavier gun and it does have more recoil. So because of that, I feel like, uh, I didn't feel like I had as much accuracy and even looking back at myself shooting in like a video, I felt like my ability to aim was a little bit, uh, impaired because of the heft of that gun. So um, this gun, however, it does have a number of safety features. It has the squeeze he was talking about. It also has a, a manual safety. I feel like in terms of having a gun around your home, it's so great that it has these extra fail safes in case you have children around. So I really liked that about it. Yeah, I feel like this, if this was like free in your purse, I don't feel like it would go off. You know what I mean? Like you actually literally have to grip and depress this before you can pull the trigger. So even if the safety was off, you're not gonna be shooting this easily. I so, still wouldn't have that free in my purse, but yeah. Somebody might. Yeah, right. Somebody might. Um, so this one, I was the one that he had highly recommended and I was really impressed by it. It is very lightweight. I mean, compared to this one, this is so much lighter. I mean, it really is a huge difference. 
Uh, very easy to pull back. The pullback is really smooth. It's really simple and easy. Uh, it still has your manual safety, uh, which I felt like is good. And uh, in terms of shooting, it was so much easier to sight my target. It had very little recoil. And I, I feel like in terms of what I would need for, um, you know, aggressiveness of the gun, I feel like that's plenty for me as a mom out hiking with my boys and just wanting something just to feel that extra layer of protection. I feel like that would be all I would need. So this was my favorite in terms of shooting it. Uh, this one, excellent in terms of the size, not super easy to pull back, actually harder to pull back than this one or this one. I was so surprised at that. Uh, no safety, which I didn't like even as a concealed carry uh, or in any other scenario, I just didn't like that it didn't have manual sa safety. Did have this super cool laser, so that was extra awesome and actually did make it a lot easier to hit the target. So I was thinking if I get a different weapon, I wouldn't mind getting a laser on it. So I really liked that about it. And I also just really love the size. I mean, it's so compact, so easy uh, to carry or put in your pocket or in a fanny pack or in a belly band. I thought this would just be perfect. However, when we shot this gun, uh, a lot of recoil uh, right there on par with this one with the nine millimeter. So that was a lot more than the 22. And also uh, it malfunctioned several times. And as someone who's not confident with weapons, that was a huge concern. No, it malfunctioned every, every single magazine had a malfunction. Yeah. So she probably shot three or four different magazines worth of ammunition and it, it, it had an issue every time. So that is, that would make this not even, you know. Not a viable option. It's just not a viable option because of that. And I don't know if it's just this gun. So maybe Ruger messed up here but I'm starting to lean against that because with the LCP2, I, when we were purchasing this, I, I really liked the way it looked. I liked the sleek profile. I liked the size. I liked the way it all came together. I love the laser idea because I think that's, that's just really cool. When the laser's built in like this, you don't have to worry about mounting it. You don't have to worry about calibrating it. You don't have to worry about knocking it as you, you know, put it in your holster or whatever. So I thought that was going to be really cool for her and something special, and I really wanted to get it. And I and I leaned on this one. I I was the one. She actually wanted the other one that had, you know, the the manual safety. But I was like, no, nah, it'll be okay. The problem with it not feeding and things like that, it's unacceptable. You cannot have that be an issue. But the guy who sold it to us said the same thing. He said his that he had purchased. He was even kind of trying to push us away from this. The one that he had purchased had had a problem. Then when we went to go shoot, thank you so much, Joe, for having us. You're an awesome host, thank you. When we went to shoot, it was, you know, the exact same thing for him. He had already purchased one and said the exact same thing. It, it had issues and I don't think it's just this gun. I think it's all around this design has an issue and it's, it's not feeding properly. And we tried two different types of ammunition, the more expensive yep. kind and the tip, the type you would typically go target shooting with. Yep. Both had issues. So I don't, it wasn't ammunition, it's, it's gotta be the gun. So out of the three, uh, me watching you go through this progression and you did a great job. Oh, thanks. Huh? You did great with all of them, but I would not choose this for right. you and maybe something different like it, but that I don't think that this is a viable option. And out of these three, um, I, I like them all in the sense that, you know, I like things about them, but I really like that you felt comfortable shooting the nine millimeter. And I think that the fact that this is a very common size of ammunition that right. you're gonna be able to find anywhere, stuff like that, that makes me feel more comfortable for this for you. But uh, none of these, op these two options aren't gonna be, like you said, concealed carry options. Right. But for home defense, I think they'll work great. And I'm just really glad you got a chance to do this. So what would you say was your favorite out of the... I really like the TX. I mean, I think in terms of shooting, ease of shooting and sighting and all those things, the TX felt more comfortable. I think with more practice, I, you know, it might be more of a toss up between the two, but both of these I feel like would be great for a woman. And, uh, you know, if you've been hesitant to get out there, just nervous about 
handling a weapon. That's how I felt. I felt nervous even handling it. Um, so if you have those kind of concerns, you've got kids, you're worried, I would just say really take the time to get out there and practice because even after the one time shooting these, several rounds of shooting these weapons, I feel so much more comfortable. Not that I feel like a pro, but I, that layer of fear and anxiety about going and shooting them, that is not there anymore. And I actually really enjoyed it. I'm really looking forward to going back. I uh, didn't expect that. Yeah. So you did so great today, babe. I just gotta uh, thank say, you. Like, you you did. I had you a lot of fun. All the safety stuff, right? You you checked every weapon. You didn't. You know. You didn't. You didn't do anything wrong. You did a great job. So you didn't flag anybody. You weren't doing any of the stuff that you see typically oh, people do their first time out. And she had not shot any of these weapons. She's shot a twenty-two in the past, but she had not shot any of these handguns. So she was completely her first time so she did so well and and just like she said i would do the exact same thing it's not going to get better it's likely to get worse so when you think about protecting yourself you know this is something that this is why our country cared so much about this they made it one of the first amendments the second amendment it's so important to our society as a whole to be able to protect ourselves, not just from a tyrannical government, which you might start to see in the future, not just from that, but from other people trying to take away your freedom and liberty to have and you know possess things. That's what people are going to do as you know times get worse. So don't be easy prey, be ready to protect yourself. That's the kind of thing that I think our God wants us to be diligent. He wants us to be ready and you know, not afraid to do the things we need to do to protect others and ourselves. So I'm so glad that my wife went through this little journey and I think it's just the first step for her and she also got a chance to shoot a shotgun. Yeah. She shot an AR-15, so yeah. she got to shoot some other weapons that other people had fear and anxiety about too. You right. know, like I, the first time I shot, I felt, I felt like it was too big for me and I wasn't really sure about it. And I remember those times, they were a long time ago, but I remember feeling the same way and you went through it and you were brave and I, I'm really thankful that you're my wife. Uh, I love you. <laughs> well, you know, just, I just wanna say, uh, it's really easy to lean on your husband when it comes to this stuff. You know, we had this kind of unusual situation that forced me to kind of pursue this initially on my own. But I will say that even, even for those of you that have husbands who, are comfortable and you know they're they you've got weapons at home they're in the safe and you just never touch them and never do anything you just never know when it's going to be you at home with your kids or out on a trail with your kids or somewhere where you might need to take that step i have really been surprised by some situations that we've had come up in the last couple of years and i think that like he was saying it could very well get a lot worse so well, we really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, check us out again. Put a like in the video if you like Thanks. it. Um, we want to spend more time going over stuff like this and then maybe sometimes sharing the word. I think that might be kind of cool. Absolutely. Maybe we Absolutely. should start uh, getting into the Bible a little bit. And if you guys are interested in that, leave a comment below because that's what we're about. We, wanna, we want to share what we're most passionate about. And, and Jesus is the most important thing in our lives. Uh, the he biggest change that's ever happened to me, and I've shared that with you guys in the past, the biggest change that's ever happened for her in her life, for the good. Lots of miracles it's, there's, in this room. <laughs> there's nothing like it. And if you haven't had a chance to accept the free gift that God's provided for you, he came down in human form and gave himself as a sacrifice for your sin. And be, believe it or not, you are a sinner. If you've even told a lie, if you if you've committed any sin, you're guilty of all of the entirety of this sin. All of that is is pinned against you, and you carry it around with you like a burden. So what Jesus said is, you're guilty, and I don't want you to suffer because of that guilt. I want to come down and pay your fine, and that's what Jesus did. A it says free with joy, he went to the cross for us. Because he loves us so much. A free gift, a free sacrifice for you, he came down, paid your debt, and all he's asking you is to accept that free gift. 
If you'll accept that oh, yeah. free gift of grace today, grace means unmerited favor. You didn't do anything to deserve it. I didn't do anything to deserve it. No one did. He did it on his own. Before we ever loved him, he first loved us and loved us so deeply and so intensely that he was willing to go through all of that agony for us. And he did it willingly, like you said, with joy. So we urge you, if you haven't considered it, accept that free gift today, become a Christian. We want you to become a member of our family and we want to be able to share in our journey with you. Let's we share want, our testimonies. Let us know, we'd us. love to hear. If God has saved you, we want to hear about it. So anyway, we're going to sign off. Thank you so much for watching. Check in next time. God bless. Bless you guys.